have to return to reality. TF Nation 2017 then. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was all right, yeah. It was a blast, of course it was going to be. It was just great to see a lot of people that I have known on the interwebs for quite a while for the first time. And it's, it was just a really good atmosphere, I could tell, for especially a lot of other people more than me. If there was one thing that I think was a bit more prevalent this year, it was that there was just an energy from a lot of new people. It was their first one, and I wish I could have some of that back. Because honestly, for me this year, it all felt a bit more subdued, a little bit less of a party. Of course, it's still like the best weekend of the year. Things were just a little bit, a little bit more chill. And maybe that's because it's more comfy, and everyone knows everyone, and everyone knows the place, and they know what they're getting into. Especially after last year, the TF Nation team showing what a bloody good job they do. This year, it being the second one, if you had gone to the first one, it's just like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, we know what we're getting in for, just get comfy, enjoy it, that's good. But I did get the feeling that, like, there was so much hype leading up to it that it didn't quite carry through the actual weekend because everyone at that point had got so excited that they were just tired. Everyone went a little bit too mental on Friday night, me included, and uh, regretted it the next day, so... The weekend was a bit, it was a bit of a sort of up and downy kind of thing, not exactly a, a straight line of really good time. It was a bit like, oh, Saturday morning was not good for me. Um, and uh, yeah, it's sort of, uh, at least I did stay you know, the whole of Sunday this time because we left on Monday and that felt a lot better. Just being able to wind it down and enjoy the very last moments of it all up to like Monday morning when you're seeing people around in the bar. That was good, because it did feel like it just extended it nicely. But I have to say, I feel like I didn't see a lot of the people that I would normally do. Didn't get to hang out with everyone for the amount of time that I might have liked to, or at least would have done in previous years. But then there were new people to see and hang out with, so maybe that made up for it. Either way, everyone had a really good time, and I'm going to show you things that I got, because that's what we do in these, isn't it? I get things that aren't robots out of the way first, because there's... A a lot of robots. I'm, I'm sat here with my coffee table mostly dominated by 30 separate figures, which I didn't done go and buy or got given. Oh, uh, yeah. First off, I'm going to talk about what might be the best bits, actually. Art commissions that I did get done. First off, this lovely, lovely hotshot triptych the R Adam, Zero Kai's Rated 5, and did for me, and chucked in a little trading card one as well, that was like, that's too good. Um, yeah, I was so chuffed with how this came out. I mean, I had worked with him behind the scenes a little bit as he was doing this, because I had the idea for like splitting it up for three different sections for the three different Unicorn Trilogy boys, and seeing him put it together, as it went along, I was a bit like, oh, it's going to be good, it's going to be good. And then when he handed it to me, I was just like, no, that's, that's too good in person. It's just, how does how does someone work marker pens as well as this? I, I want to learn that. So, yeah, proper swish. And it was really good to meet Adam probably for the first time as well and hang with him, chat some art, get some tips. Um, but I'm light years away from doing something like this. So, yes, that's going to need a frame. And the next thing that's going to need a frame is from Mr Nick Roche. Because I thought, I've never actually properly commissioned the proper big comic artist people. And he only bloody went and did that. And it's like, ah, oh, it's good. It's good. Isn't that good? Oh, mate. And he told me he finished it on the plane over the night before. And I was like, how the hell do you do art on a plane? I wouldn't even think about getting a pen out and just sitting, <laughs> sitting there in turbulence or whatever, flying over from Ireland. It's like, <laughs> the skill involved in that man's hands is unspeakable. I drew a little rotor storm in my hardcover copy of Last Down of the Wreckers as well. And just to watch him actually sit there and draw something was a bit mental because it's just like, scribble, 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 here's a line, there's a line. Suddenly, you've drawn the character and I'm like, did I blink and miss something because it just suddenly appeared there on the page? But that was cool. Of course, I got the Toy Foo Zine because it's all about Armada. I'm like, yeah, that's my jam. I had to have that. I mean, half of it is just, you know, 
levity and fun and being a bit of a joke with, you know, the reputation of Armada and all that. But um, the best bit is that there's an article in there about the game and they're stuck on the same bit that I am in the game and have been for like five years now. So <laughs> it's nice to know I'm not alone in that regard. But that's just so good and the toy food guys are always just great and it's always just such a good selection of stuff and I've got some really good stuff in there and of course it's great because it's all going to charity and you feel like oh I should be paying you more for this but yes got the zine that was a real highlight I, I, I turned up at the toy food table first when I hit the dealer room and thought well I've got to find something to buy because I just want the zine you know it's like because they come with the purchase you don't just get them free technically um I was like well I've come here for the zine and the badges, I've got a handful of them. Of course I got the hot shot one, but it's on my rucksack. Um, and the big old, big old print of Ed Peary's cover art there, which is just like the best damn thing, because it's an incredible Hulk cover that I really like, but it's got a hot shot on it, and it's, again, I need a frame for this, like, oh my days. The, the whole, the whole toy foo scene was just like, yes, that's, that's the best. So, excellent extra curricular stuff as it were. Um, oh, I've got the, uh, I've got Kevin Gorman's big old photo -y picture there as well. These are great. I follow him on Instagram, Twitter and everything. You see whenever he puts on these up and it's like, how on earth do you do this? But it's nice too. So cheers Toy Foo lads. This is all proper good stuff and I may be one of the only people who truly appreciate it, <laughs> but whatever. Talking about zines. Were you lucky enough to grab one of our 100 copies of the Refined Robot Co zine? I've only got about, uh, I've got about 10 left. Um, there are a few guys who have said that they would like us to send them one, so it's good to have a few spare, but it did feel a bit like, oh, it's a bit of a shame we didn't get all of them handed out. And then I've been going through Facebook today, looking at people's hauls, and it's like, ah, oh, like, people have been putting them in there with their hauls. It's like, that's such a nice feeling to see, to see that there in amongst all the other stuff that they've bought and got, because we put a lot of work into this, and it was just good to see I look on people's faces as I open it up and went, oh, that's nice, that's nice. And to just say that, yeah, we, we're we chuffed with this and Lee didn't give himself enough credit inside of it. It's good to see that people were appreciative of a bit of craft being handed to them for free and all that. I don't want to put a down on, you know, the forge and all of the excellent arty stuff that was there that I feel bad for not sort of patronising. Um, but, I mean, I was talking to Dave Tree of all the cool stuff and he was saying it's just nice to be able to be given something that's been made by someone because that's a big thing in other conventions but it doesn't seem to be for us because if you make something you go and you sell it on your table you don't just go around giving out stuff that you've made for the fun of it and that's exactly what we did with this we're not really looking to get that much out of it apart from your attention um so yeah it's just nice to nice to get the responses and the feedback and just see what people thought of that as we were handing them out I still can't believe the drawing gave on to Jeff Senior. It's like, I've I've drawn the stuff on the back and you've given it to Jeff Senior. Oh. But yeah, that's, that's all the, the cool paperwork side of things. Um, get this out of the way now. Macula gave me a Megablox Patrick from Spongebob. That's all that out of the way. Shall we get on to robots? Because there's so many bloody robots here and it's going to take a while. I already realise this video is going to be super long. In no particular order, but kind of going from smallest to biggest, because that's how I've got them stood here. Start with some Titan Masters. They're only three quid each from ID, and it's like, well, obviously that's because everyone's already got these, but no shops around me do Titan Masters, so I picked up Loudmouth and Nightbeat, Screaming Face Nightbeat, um, and that was good. You know, you might have had these this time last year, but I've never seen them. So next up is my first smattering of sealed armada goodness. The Destruction Minicon team. Drill bit and buzzsaw and Dulor. And they're all right. I mean, I, I had the road record team, the green versions of these. Back in the day. Um, and it's like, yeah, okay, so these are like the, the proper decos. This is how they look in the comics, because they're quite prominent in the comics. Um, but I'm just a bit like, well, it's just same thing again and drill bit especially is kind of floppy for like the first use of a mold why well, is the repaint i've had 14 years more solid than this one that i only got the other day more mini cons the air defense team now he's probably saying oh ben why haven't you already got them why haven't you got a star saber um because all the way back in 2002 i got the vhs of the first few episodes of the armada cartoon 
and that came with a Minicron, and the one I got was Sonar, so I'm like, well, I don't really want to go and get a duplicate, like, even if it means that's how I get a Star Saber, I don't really want another one, like, what's the point of having another one? So, for all this time, I've just been like, well, I suppose I'll get one eventually, but it's going to be kind of weird having two of these, um, but this one, because it's a bit newer and hasn't been handled by me for 15 years, is a lot more solid, and of course, he's got his mates, to make a big silly see-through sword, which I was glad to have for a reason we will learn about soon. Uh, but suffice to say, yeah, it's just like, you know, if you know the Star Saber, you know what to expect with these. It could have been executed a bit better, let's put it that way. But um, again, it's nice to just have some prominent Minicons in their proper colours. Next up, G1 Lightspeed, which was what I got off the toy food table because I was thinking, what can I buy? And you just stand there staring and it's like, there's so much stuff here. I don't know, I don't know what to get, and I saw him and I thought, well, I've always kind of liked Lightspeed, and he was complete, and he looks in you know, reasonable nick, so I thought, oh, I'll get him, and he's just a fun little combinery lad, isn't he? A bit too fun, a bit of harmless old vintage stuff that's a little bit rough around the edges. Also from Toy Fu, I noticed they had a little tub of spy changes, and I'm like, oh, I'm always down for a spy changer, I do quite like them, um, so I got, is it Rev? R-E-V? TF Wiki tells me that stands for Race Exertion Vehicle. And then his Japanese name is Igorokira. And it's like, all right, yeah, you've suddenly become my new favorite spy changer because look at that decal on his chest. That's cool. And then he makes such a nice car. And I'm like, why haven't I got any little car blokes that look as good as that? Like proper Lambo time. All the stuff at the back here. Mmm, slightly metallic yellow plastic, good angles, that's such a nice car. Can we get like a brand new one of this bloke, because he's just like, so hot. Talking about hot though, oh, I've got another Spire Changer which was the very first hot shot ever. It's not really the hot shot that I like, but you know, he's called that and he kind of enters into the pantheon in a kind of little sideways angle. Yeah, Spire Changer hot shot, wearing his Flavortown shirt. I wish I wish I didn't know memes, so I didn't have to look at this and think that, but there we go. Um, yeah, it's just a nice little black car with the flames on. I don't know why his tummy is see-through, but there you go, a little, little pocket hot shot. That's nice. Next up was something that I wasn't really intending to buy, and I thought, well, they're here. Maybe I can give it a go. They might be quite fun little figures to have. I do quite like the Legends guys. And these look quite poseable, quite nice little sort of robot fellas. It's the clones. And when I got them out, I thought, they're just bad, they're just bad, you know, because they don't do a lot to transform, do they? Because they've got silly space futury alt modes, and it's like, well, Cloud Raker, he's like one of the pretender inner guys, he just put his arms around and turn his legs around, and it's like, it's a spaceship, honest, it's not a robot, uh, yeah, no, it's not very good looking alt mode, but, um, a little robot guy like this, he's just, he's just fun, and actually, they have grown on me. Because being just the new little guys like this, just sort of the right sort of thing to pick up and just fill with. And they've got good joints, and I like the way you can move their arms in like that for some good poses. And the paint is nice, and the details nice, evoking the G1 weirdery that is the clones. I mean, you think about it, it's such an old gimmick, and I don't care that I haven't got both of the red ones or both of the green ones. It's like, I can take a leave the fact that I've got two robots that look the same and turn into different things. Because it's like, it's not really a gimmick, is it? It's just an odd design thing that might have actually saved them some money at the time. Um, but the only real gripe I have about these is I thought they had the rub signs on their chests that tell you what they turn into, but it's just a sticker that looks like a half done rub sign. Got no attachment to the clones and they're just Strange, strange things that really could have been left in the depths of the 80s that we didn't need updating. Gotta say, you know, the deco on Wingspan is pretty strong, pretty strong. I do need to assemble a shelf of teal robots like this because that's just, yeah. That's it, that's nice, that's a, that's a proper Decepticon deco there. Even if his bird mode is like the flattest, boxiest thing, just, it's just, it's not good. You can't say it's good, um, but they're just fun to muck about with. Then we've got some Energon bits, because on the stall, I think it was a space bridge, um, that I got some proper nice Armada bits from last year. I was thinking, oh, what have they got this time? It's just all the same stuff again that I didn't buy last year. So it's a bit like, oh, well, I suppose I'll just have them then. 
Ten pounds got me an offshoot. The signal flare repaint in the green and that. And signal flare is nice. He's a, he's a good lad. Yeah, uh, Omnicom's all right. So I got the strong arm as well. Energon, Energon, strong arm, strong arm. He's he's blue. I don't know why he's blue. Is it meant to look like beachcomber? Maybe it's just you know. I mean, let's face it. You don't get decos like this anymore. That are just like a power up different look for the guy because now if you repaint something it's got to look like someone else it's got to homage another character or design it can't just be a cool alt deco and that's what this is and again he's a pretty decent sorry little bloke yeah then i have a gift from mike the glaug because he went and bought like a potato sack full of old junk and then he fished this out of it and said have that there you go there was a sealed one floating around for 20 quid but have that for free I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. It is the Mega SCF Super Collection Figure Demolisher. It's just a little more poseable, just BBC guy. It was so cold when Mike gave it to me that I thought it was die cast, but no, it's just plastic. Yes, he's missing missiles up here, and I think you might get his minicon as well, and like different hands or something. He said there were bits that this would have that it clearly hasn't got, but just a little solid demolisher man. You know, what's, what's bad about that? What's bad about that? Especially for free. Yeah, boy. Moving on up a little bit. Beast Wars Bone Crusher! After I did a Beast Wars article for the RR Co and dug all my old ones out, not literally all of them, I got all of them in one place and thought, you know what, actually, I haven't paid attention to Beast Wars, I haven't really thought about it or played with any of the figures for ages. I better pick up something new while I'm at TFN, because I'm just feeling it a bit more again, just appreciating the strange design stuff that we got from that. So I went and got a bloke that's, yeah, pretty, pretty strange when you realise what he does. I suppose I should have shown you in Buffalo mode for more of the effect of the whole vomit missile head extension very HR Geiger thing going on with this guy. Uh, I can't look at this and not think of Colin's review that he did that just sums up everything weird about this from the vomiting alien extension head to the weirdly conversational hands that just make you want to pose him like he's feeling ill and... Oh, he's got weird gold toes and like fleshy, like blood red coloured chunks of buffalo. It's like, this is an odd thing. It's very good. I like it. He's he's just the beef man. And um, yeah, well, he was the only beast horse. Oh, hmm. So it's technically not the only beast horse thing I picked up. Um, yeah, it just felt nice. Oh yeah, something, something nice and new that's got all the the furry texture and a rub sign somewhere and just some really weird design stuff going on. I think I might have lost that missile forever. Anyway, moving on, we've got Quake. Quake and Bake, boy! He's just, he's just nice, isn't he? You know, the hard head's a good mould. It looks better like this, especially with that head. The, oh, just perfect, perfect head sculpt there, isn't it? Not really a lot to say because he's just a new bloke and really, when it comes down to it, the more interesting stuff is all the weird old stuff that you won't find in a shop anymore. But saying that, I'm going to go and talk about the other Tantra Town stuff. I was a bit like, ooh, do I really want Misfire? I don't know. I don't know about the red bit in his chest. I don't know about his blue eyes. His face doesn't look like he does in the comics. That's the only way I know Misfire. Um, but he's hot pink and he's actually really cool and he's got Trigger Happy's legs and nothing else from Trigger Happy. He's solid and... He just looks good. You want those just like, yeah, nice spaceship time. And of course, I had to get Twin Twist as well, because I got Top Spin, and Twin Twist is the better one. So here we go, it's the Hench Drill Lad, with a very, very comic looking face. It just it looks like how he was drawn in Topic 2006 in a good few issues, and I appreciate that. I mean, it's nice to have, you know, sort of a last down of the records thing going on, especially when you think that, like the last couple of waves of Tantra Return stuff, it's like, you just it's all wreckers, and it's like, okay, that's fun. Um, so it's nice to have the other one, the missing bloke, the other bro, um, but you know, so much of him is just top spin, and you know if you've got top spin, it's really good, so Twin Twist is just really good by default, and kind of doesn't blow you away, because you know he's going to be really good, so yeah, he, he's really good. It's, what we expect in carrying on a trend of newer figures uh here we get to the possibly only real regret purchase um so rid warriors are no longer stocked in my tesco's despite the fact that that's where people have been saying they've been finding lots of new ones for about 10 quid um 
And among those are Twinferno, who I paid 20 quid for. Uh, yeah, um, he's so simple. I mean, it's, it's a good figure. He's a decent, fun, completely mental thing. He's a bright, like, it's not even red. It's like spicy orange stealth bomber. Stealth there being not exactly the, uh, the correct word. Um, that has dragon heads coming out of it. That spew fire. Why? Like, why? Um, but it's just so crazy new that it's just definitely worth having, I felt. He's a thing, um, but he's a thing I shouldn't have paid so much for. If I had Bludgeon as well, the same price, and I'm like, well, of course, really, I should have got Bludgeon, because that's, that's like, that's a proper sort of bot that's worth getting, that everyone's like, oh yeah, I gotta get the Bludgeon, gotta go and pay into more G1 homage work. Um, but I looked at him and just thought, I've got Blast Wave who's clearly the pre-paint, but it uses so much of exactly the same deco as Blast Wave, it's like, it, it's too weak. Too weak! And so, let's move along. On the Sunday, Kapow brought out just a smorgasbord, a loads of really good old stuff. I was like, where has this been? Just like, yes please, I'll dig into that and find some gems, and there was some properly good old stuff that I was thinking, ah, mmm. Oh, I really should go for one of those. I haven't got one of them. I've always kind of wanted one of them. But when you realise it's all like classics and universe stuff, that I'm very much, I'm over that hill now. It's like that's that's a way in the past and the new generation stuff is where it's at. And I want to get figures that fit in with all those that are current. And I look forward to essentially some of the old universe stuff being redone again now to fit in with the current style. So I could have got a Silver Streak. Could have got a version of that prowl mold that isn't all sticky and the paint comes off in my hands. I could have got a sun streaker, stuff like that. It's like, oh, you know what? That, that stuff that is probably stuff I should have in my collection, but at the same time, it's like, well, I've got new ones. I like the way they're doing them now. The older figures, they're, they're, they are dated now. They are a bit dated. Um, but nevertheless, I got a Ramjet because I always wanted one at the time when it was back down in the classics days. I never saw Wave 2. Ramjet was in Wave 2. Roundjet is the seeker that I have got a, a strange connection to because for the longest time I've had a, a G1 Roundjet, but just his body. No wings, no landing gear, no cockpit, hardly any stickers, no hands. Um, so I've always kind of felt like, well, I, I want a Roundjet I can actually play with. And this is that guy. Maybe the Henke one might look a bit better. Maybe we'll get a new one randomly in the next year. Um, but here we go, Classics Roundjet is just something that I've, I've always just kind of wanted and it just felt good to think, yeah, here we go, there's one, brand new, with the weird little Velcro flap on the front of the box, remember that? I'm just glad that he's good, because my Classic Star Stream is riddled with QC issues, which is why I went and got Acid Storm and then Thundercracker and then, yeah, I didn't need another Seeker. But being Roundjet, I like Roundjet. Ramjet's good. He's got a good looking jet mode, isn't he? And then moving on to a bit more of an event. Ho oh, ho! Takara. Micron Densetsu. Hot shot. Mmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. He was mint in box in his lovely Japanese box, and I was like, oh no, I have heard legends of this. Because back in the day, way back, like, it might have been 2004, I think. Um, like around the time that Energon was sort of just creeping over the horizon. Um, I went to a local con and there's, there was always a, a stall there, this guy selling the Transformers. I don't know if he's anyone that might be around at conventions now. He had all the Japanese Armada stuff and I was clearly quite exuberantly interested. Um, so he was showing me the hotshot and he was showing me the light up fist. And I was like, oh no, it lights up. It's better than the one I've got, but I can't have that. I've already got a hot shot. No, no. And so for many years, I've lived with the knowledge of what this figure is and how it's better than the one that I had all those years ago. And now I've got it and it's like, oh, oh yes. Yes, boy. Of course, it doesn't take away any love I've got for the old thing that sits on my shelf, but the badge is painted properly. Even though I really, there's a place in my heart for the old Armada badges that are just slathered with paint and just like paint covering up all the eyes and little bits there. Um, but that's painted properly. And he's got like extra paint around here and like the 
bits in his legs are a bit of a different colour and it all just feels a little bit crisper and nicer and then you've got the fatty flipping lights up and it's like mate mate and he was only 15 quid and oh mm, yes Hail to the king, baby. But there we go, yeah, that's why I got the Star Saber, because I've got a hot shot with a light-up hand, I can put it in and make it glow about, like, not even a third of the way up, the light just sort of stops, so it's like, oh yeah, a really good going making that see-through, guys, ha ha ha. Little bit of a problem, though, I don't know if Jolt is any different to the one I've already got, so I won't be able to ever tell the difference and tell which one is the Japanese one, so, ha. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to compare at, at least, like, he's in better nick than the one I've already got because he's not all rusty and floppy. Um, but something nice as well, I broke the engine block on mine, one of the pegs. So, again, it's nice just to have it, like, work properly and it feel all new and it's like, oh, I've got him all brand new again. So he's clearly a huge highlight of the haul. And now I've got two hot shots, two hot shots. Oh, yes, good going. But um, the real highlight, I think, is this guy, Botcon Banzatron. I got off the toy food table for only 30 quid. Woo boy! He's missing his missiles. Who gives a monkeys? I wanted to get a version of this mold because I haven't got the Angel Mirage, Dreadwing, Boatman, um, and to then find it in this deco. Oh, yes. This is so good. I mean, I didn't think this figure was as complex as it is. For an Anadrom figure, it is such a pain to transform. Oh, I was sat there for ages, good 10, 15 minutes trying to transform it for the first time, because of course I have no idea how to do any of it. And yeah, it, it's a bit of a mess. Everything could go in any direction, and it's like the arms are full of so many swivels. I it, just, it's like, which way round is it supposed to go? And you're testing out all these different configurations and turning things around the other way and thinking well there's that tab in there I don't know uh, yeah that wasn't easy or fun but now I think I've got the hang of it and it's such a good figure such a good figure I mean he's got bits that go over his shoulders spring out launchers like that and that's in the front of the boat and he's got it's on his arms and he's so poseable and the light piping and the head sculpt and just everything. It's such a good design, such a cool looking robot. His legs, oh, he's looking a bit gun to me down there. He's got the big swept back bits, which I, using a kind of samurai logic, I would say, you know, if he had swords, they'd go in there, but of course he doesn't, so they just kibble and take up a lot of room, and I suppose maybe you could get him up there and give him this sort of samurai shoulder banner thing going on. Yeah, it's just good. It is so good. Uh, and then he's got all these glyphs down the side, and I was like, oh, what do they say? Wait, I'm sat near Gherkin, who knows all of this stuff, almost off by heart, and I just shoved that in his face and he told me exactly what it was straight away because he's obviously memorised it. I don't imagine he can actually read them, but I wouldn't put it past him because as soon as he told me what it was, I could read it as well. Uh, yeah. But it says, to the victor go the spoils. Or, no, the profits, because that's a T. Yeah, I can read it now. It's really weird. Um, but yeah, Botcon Banzitron, man. That's just something special. Just the, the, the prestige of being a Botcon thing, just being a rarer cool, better deco, and I mean, I'm going to treat it like an Energon figure, really, because that's what it is, um, but it's just, yeah, oh, it's just such a special, crazy, rare, just bloody cool thing, and I'm so glad to have found that and swooped in and snatched it up before anyone else noticed how much it was. Oh, yes, that's, that's the pickup of the convention right there. But coming very close, coming very close indeed, Encore Sound Blaster with Wingedy Thingedy and Enemy Problematic Cassette Children. Oh yes, sealed, brand new, 45 quid off Kapow on a Sunday. That felt like a bit of a steal and we, oh, this is great. I haven't got a Soundwave, the G1E Tape Man at all, never even touched one. Um, and after, like, like Dan recommended me one, because he knows what's good that's old and vintage, and I could see the appeal of this, like, 
of course it's an iconic good looking design the transformation is cool and he just oozes G1 style to get this deco as well the red and the gold and the black just swish and being this newer encore guy nothing stickers everything's all printed on you don't have to faff about and nothing's gonna get funny and peel off and he's gonna look as good as that forever and that is just good and the chrome on his missiles and just, uh, the whole tape deck thing the way that's bigger so you can fit both the cassettes in there at once even though i agree with dorian who picked up a g1 sound wave that the flat front looks better because then you just get a flat front to the walkman mode um but that's nice swish bit of japanese only g1 but like brand shiny new pristine oh yeah and i've never handled any of the cassettes either so like wing thing he's really nice he's just you know little bat bloke with his funny folding face and strange tiny ears and what i thought were badly chromed weapons they're actually supposed to look all kind of charcoal coloured apparently all of them look like that so it's not just that mine looks bad um yeah he's fun he's got die cast tummy there's an orange bat wow and then like enemy like i've never handled a rumble or a frenzy um and he's kind of both at once because he's red and blue so clearly he's the best one clearly he is the quintessential tape man forget about the other two because enemy is best because his name is enemy <laughs> and it's just like what he's great like little cassette guys are great like his head is on a spring and you have to stick his hands in his head to transform him and he's got die cast feet and i can't get his guns on his hands somehow i don't know which quite way around you're supposed to work with them but like he's tiny and he's g1 he's got double jointed elbows and like wow you know these guys were special weren't they and lo we reached the penultimate transformer of my haul masterpiece mp38 toy colors optimus primo oh yes i managed to handle john's mp is it 32 the regular one the, you know the normal original masterpiece optimus primal uh before we headed down to birmingham and i thought that's quite nice yes but this one is so much better so much better just the proper flat black fur the proper just bright colors the white that already looks slightly off white not like it might already be yellowing like my original one um yeah that's just good this works so well i had avoided the masterpiece beast world stuff for so long and now i'm on board and it's like yeah this is something else something else i mean light up eyes light up eyes man and the different face and he's got the mutant head mask and that then lights up because it's got clear eyes in it and oh uh, and the mace has got a, a proper metal chain on it and he's got all the swords he's got a double sword and i've got an extra sword from some sort of error so i've got three swords and oh mate love the pop out guns in his arms love the fact they didn't even bother to think about the chest beating gear gimmick although they have of course given a little peg on his back that kind of homages that somehow and the shoulder cannons and the swords can go in his back and different monkey faces and proper monkey posability and big monkey fingers and it's all smooth matte surfaces that i'm actually quite worried about like denting and scratching because it seems like that's the sort of thing that would happen to it and the pistons in his legs and his shins doing that thing that makes his shins hurt a bit oh it's so good from top to toe proper proper masterpiece optimus primal and the best thing is that it's toy accurate it's toy accurate masterpiece not a toon accurate masterpiece although of course being beast wars i would have been perfectly happy with a toon accurate one this is something else and it's just exactly the sort of thing that we should be getting from masterpiece just yeah do do that old toy that i like again but perfect and while that brings us to the end of the transformers in this hall it does not bring us to the end of the toys in this hall because my friends it's happened 
I am now in possession of something third party. Because Dorian has a thank you for my work on the zine, the blog and everything, which I, I was very appreciative of. You know, I don't want to be insincere and look a gift horse in the mouth, but um, he bought me a third party thing. Because of course he was going to, because of course if Dorian was going to get me anything, it was going to be something like that, wasn't it? So that I have to have something so that I can't go on saying I haven't got any and I'm not going to have any. And he goes and breaks my one rule. It's the... Hot Soldiers Soundtrack. It's a little sound wave man that was cheap on Compound, like 15 quid. Yeah, I've stuck a sticker on his chest. Why have I done that? Why have I bothered to try legitimising this thing by doing that? But I had a sheet of repro labels from In Demand Toys. I'm like, well, I'm never going to use all these. So at least try and make this a little bit better and stick that on there and try and make it just like fit a bit more in you know, with everything else I've got because at the end of the day that's my biggest problem with third parties they don't fit in with everything else Hasbro that you've already got um, and yeah, this doesn't I'm going to review this I'm going to review this because I have to you know it's my first third party thing I am putting on that balaclava and I'm giving this a right rollicking it's going to be good because the box is covered in such choice English such terrible terrible taglines and stuff it's oh, pure comedy so yeah um it's my first 3p thing just a little sound wave man that could be so much better it's just ugh. but yeah i don't i don't want to bow on it too much because dorian gave it me and it's like ah oh, i just can't help but deride it so there we go um yeah he's, he's, he's kind of nice you know for being a little sound wave guy but um no, have a gold star for effort, but it's not quite all there. But wow, yeah, that's everything that I got. And I was sitting, at one point, sitting there on Saturday thinking, I haven't really got a lot, have I? There's not really anything that bothered about getting. Uh, I'll see what I get. Might not be much of a haul this year. And I come in with all this lot, and it's like, ah. Uh, at what point did the handful of figures I had turn into this cornucopia of stuff? But there we go, it's all good. It's all good. Some are better than others, clearly. Um, but yeah, man, just good, good stuff. Well, I don't really feel like I've got anything that's got the same sort of lasting impact as the stuff last year, like that Galvatron I got off mic, like that is still up there, right on the top of my shelf, forefront. I see it every day and go, oh yeah. Um, nothing's quite hitting that peak, but definitely Got some nice bits, some nice bits. And I suppose it just goes to show that not every year you can get a proper grail item. Um, and sometimes it's just, you get a load of random stuff that you weren't really expecting at all and then just really like. So yeah, never go wrong with a TF Nation haul. Let's face it, when it's the one place in the entire, well, at least country, <laughs> um, that you can just go and you will find Nothing but Transformers of every sort. You're never really going to get disappointed either with what you buy there. So definitely, just, yeah, just go to the show. You might try and not buy as much. And then you just buy that much anyway, because that's the spirit of it all. And it really wouldn't be as good if you came home with a, a substandard haul now, would it? No, haha. <laughs> sort of tell myself anyway. But even after getting all that still had three digits in my wallet. So some kind of miracle happened there. But yeah, there we go, TF Nation. TF Nation 2017. What a lovely lot of robots, what a lovely lot of people. What a lovely lot of cool stuff going on that I didn't really see because I didn't really get to go to any of the panels. So a big thank you to everyone who took one of our zines or said hello or asked me for an autograph because that happened this year. That's a bit like, oh, I'm not not quite worthy for that but okay or had a picture with me i think actually only only graham the collector 75 came along and asked for a picture of me and that was very nice because of course that was the first time i was probably like meeting him and he's a proper legend it's like you, you want a picture of me yeah, all right okay there we go so yeah it's cool i didn't take enough pictures myself actually i've only got one picture with other people in it everything else is just like robots at the bar and even then it wasn't a lot of that and I think Umar took more pictures of my toys than I did when we were sat fiddling with stuff so yeah even though I took my camera and everything I did not document enough stuff and I definitely didn't film anything there so oh well oh well 
it's just going to have to be a good time that we all remember using our minds instead of Facebook telling you that it was a year ago that something happened. But while, you know, the bulk of this video is just me talking about what robots I got, I can't understate the fact that it's about the people. It's about the people you meet and seeing all your mates and thinking you're that person off the internet that I have spoken to a lot and have no idea what you actually look like. But you're sat here talking to me now and yeah, so good just to see everyone, just to see everyone again or for the first time. That's what makes TF Nation, that's what makes it all good. Just chilling with good peeps and having some fun and a laugh and being a disgusting human being playing cards against humanity with them all getting very drunk very early on and regretting it very much. But at least being able to remember everything so there's an advantage. I love you all. Let's do it again next year, yeah? Laters!